All right, guys, welcome to your first week of Structural Revit. Uh, what we're going to go through first is we're going to go through um, putting in our structural slabs and um, slab mesh, putting in our footings, then we'll go through putting in our rafters, and then we're going to come through putting in our floor trusses. Before we do that, I um, just want to show you um, another thing with the architectural revit. More of a personal thing, um, I hate red and brown brick. So what we do is we come here to pghbricks.com and what we're doing is we're grabbing their BIM downloads. What you'll find is for most manufacturers, they will have AutoCAD and Revit downloads, but you can grab the families straight from here. Grab this one here. All right, this is the one that I'm using. This is the brick that I prefer. I prefer the black brick with the white mortar in between. This brick here is hideous, and so is this one. Personal preference, um, same with this one here, also gross. Um, no judgment if you like it, just don't talk to me. All right, so let's come through and let's go through this. I've downloaded it, unzip the file. So usually you'd go insert load family, but this one's a bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to select a wall. We're going to go edit type. From here, we're going to edit the structure of the wall. And this time, we're going to edit the masonry brick, the brown. All right, this here, not good. So we're changing the appearance. So grab the appearance here. And this here, this little image, is the, I guess, the fabric that Revit is drawing from to print the brick to. Let's click on this one here. You have thousands of different ones already preloaded. Um, but this time we'll go to your downloads. So my computer downloads, you can save it in the other folder. Um, unzip the file, come into it. So you will see me specify on a lot of the drawings, architectural, um, like the elevations or in your specs. These are the bricks that I'll be referring to. All right, so click through the 100 folders here and this one here. This is my personal favorite type of brick. Costs a bit more, looks a bit nicer. Um, the only issue with them is if they chip, um, you end up with an ugly brown brick. So basically it's just a painted brick. I mean, you know, it's the easiest way to look at it. Go open. What it does is it changes the image that Revit is going to use. Go OK again. And go OK and OK once more. Now, what you're looking at is not much. All right, you're looking here, you're going, Nathan, your goose does nothing. Um, but just relax, we'll get there. Let's change our visual style to render. Let's see what it does. Um, depending on your computer, this might take you know, a couple of minutes, might be quick, might not be. Um, I know my other laptop kicks the fan into overdrive when I do this. Um, what it is, is this is the architectural, um, those little nice pictures that you see of 3D models. So you can see is the brick here, it's much nicer. Stands out a bit better. Um, we have our brick down the bottom and then our render hebel up the top. All right, so all it does is just change, obviously the brick type, um, which is, you know, uh, again, a personal preference. It's up to you. You can leave it as brown. Um, no drama with that. Um, just, you know, for the people that prefer this, it can be done as well. All right, so enough architects or architectural stuff. Let's come have a look at our structural stuff. So I'll close that. I don't need to save it. So new model. We're in a structural template this time. I'm going to create a new structural project. So most of the things we do are going to be in the structure tab. Um, so now we've, you know, progressed from architecture to structural, from structural, we will then do a bit of steel um, towards the end and you'll be learning steel all through your structural drafting course, um, as well as a bit of concrete. So a couple of things have changed. We've now got these analytical models in here. Um, different settings might appear. Um, Revit still operates the exact same. Just a couple of extra little buttons we have to bear in mind. Now, what we're going to do is uh, structural Revit puts us straight into level two. So we can come to level one. 
What we need to do is we need to bring in our architectural Revit. So we insert and we link Revit. All right. What we'll do is down the track, we will link in a Revit and we'll use the collaborate function or collaborate function even. And what we'll do is we'll set Revit up and what it's going to allow us is if the architect decides to make any adjustments, move a wall, shift a ceiling level, um, or the mechanical guy decides to shift some pipes, when we open up our file, Revit will go, hey, this guy's moved this, that guy's moved that. Have a look, does it clash with anything? We've highlighted where it clashes. Um, go have a look at it and make your judgment from there. You might have to reduce the beam size or shift where the beam's located, um, but that's life dealing with architects. So, come through, find where you've uh, put your two-story house. Mine's my downloads. Yours is gonna be either on your uh, USB, on your desktop, in your OneDrive, wherever you've saved it, and go open. This is what I can see. All right, this is my bottom floor. Now, you can't really see too much. What you see is some slabs. By the looks of it, a couple of columns. Come to our 3D, let's find out what's going on. And you've killed the model. All right, so we've got a double up of our levels here. So by hovering over it, this big blue box that you can see coming around is grabbing the Revit link. All right, so I've got some linked levels come in. I have slab, some columns, but nothing else. Now, what's, what's common about these as to why it's come across? These are all structural elements. All right, Revit will not bring across non-structural things. To get into them, we can come through our Revit links and grab them. But there's an easier way to do it. What we do is in our project browser, we come down here, we find our linked Revit model. We right click, we go open and unload. Revit goes, hey, you're about to undo the link you've just brought in. You sure you want to do it? And we go, yep, that's exactly what I want to do. Thank you very much. And we come back into our architectural model. Select everything. Use this fantastic little button to filter everything out. Check none, grab our walls, go OK. In here, this little box fixes everything. Make it structural. We then get some rebar cover for our steel. And we'll look at that for concrete. Um, sorry, it's for the steel reinforcement, just to clarify. Um, but yeah, for concrete drawings. Go apply. All right, now all of the walls are now structural. The only other way you could do it is by drawing structural walls to start off with. Save it. All right, now pay attention to changing these walls because um, I almost guarantee you you'll do it nine times out of 10. Now we can see that everything's gone. The reason for that is I've got this big X here, which means it's unlinked. All right, so Revit has taken the file out. So right click, a couple of options here. I either reload from, so I can reload from and find another project, um, but I haven't saved it in any way different. I've just saved it where it was, so right click, reload. What Revit will do is it will bring back all of the walls. All right, now these walls are structural, they will show in here. The other thing you can see is a lot of blue um, lines on here. That's because of the analytical model. Like I said, the analysis in Revit isn't the best. You're better off using um, a different software. Um, Abacus, Ansys, RoboStructure, Space Gas, keeps, the list keeps going, all right? Um, Revit's pretty good at analyzing the um, MEP stuff, but for structural loading, you're kind of better off putting it into another software. For now, they'll progress to it, but for now, um, that's what I would be doing. So let's hide the analytical model. And now I've got the walls back. You can make it shaded, all right? You can bring everything back in. Um, I know it looks a bit spooky coming through here. Um, yeah, but again, it's personal preference. It's whatever you want. All right, um, enough of me waffling through. Let's right click and duplicate our level one. All right, what this is going to be is this here, we're gonna rename. All in capitals to be our footing plan. Footing plan, footing layout, same thing. 
Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw in a slab. Now there is four or five different ways you can do this. Um, you have step-by-step -step instructions on learn of how to put in the footings with the set downs um, or the edge rebates in there. Um, structural drafting, I'll teach you another method of how to do it by recreating a family. Um, you go on YouTube, you probably find you know, another 30 different ways to do it. Um, for us, um, we are just going to, you know, it's going to be acceptable just to understand how to put in our steel reinforcement and concrete and things like that. Um, we can ignore putting in our set, down, uh, set downs, our rebates in the edge footing beams for now. All right, we will change it later. I will show you how to do it um, after, but for your um, assignment, enjoy your practical too. And for this, it's going to be okay to ignore it. Your project, I'll put a video in of how to do it. So for now, go structure, grab a slab. 150 mil foundation slab, no thank you. Edit type, duplicate. We're going to use 100 millimeter 25 MPA slab. All right, 100 mil thick, 25 MPA is the characteristic compressive strength of concrete at 28 days. So when they pour the concrete, they'll pour a couple in a cylinder and then they'll squish them, they'll put them in a machine and they'll squish them down at um, three days, seven days, 14 days, 28 days. Um, and they just sample them and that's how they come up with these values. All right, you'll learn about these in your structural analysis course. Um, but the MPA is megapascals. All right. You get megapascals, kilopascals, and pascals. Um, typically, engineering will look at megapascals. All right. So stress always measured in MPA. Let's go OK. Now let's edit the structure. All right. Like I said, 100 mil thick. Let's grab the material. So material. Click the three dots. Let's find our concrete. Grabbing. 25 MPA, all right, um, for a house, 40 MPA, too strong, even 32, probably a bit too strong. Usually what you'll see is you'll see between 20 to 25. Um, generally 20 is enough. Um, if your contractor recommends it, I would probably go to 25, just a little bit stronger. Um, the stronger concrete grade, the less water in it, the less water in it, the harder it is to work with. The weaker grades, more water, easier to work with. Um, you guys learned that in your construction practice um, subject. So let's go OK. Long story short, 25 MPA, just take it. Go OK again and OK one more time. Let's pick some lines. All right, let's pick these outside lines. All right, if I can't grab the right one, tab will spin me through everything. Just remember that tab is very helpful. Come through, use these little corner tools. Um, your step-by-step -step instructions will show you how to put in the um, rebate here on the side. All right, remember the timber stud sits on the higher edge, then drops in and comes out 150 mil for your brick course and your um, thermal gap to sit on. All right, um, for us, I'm not overly fussed with it. For practical two, for your project, um, you will need to. All right, but like I said, I'll put in another video um, of how to do that. Um, just a three minute video or five minute video of how to do it. Not very hard, we just changed some of the other settings. All right, so I've drawn in the outsides of my slab here. Revit gives me a standard rebar cover of 25 mil. Um, I want to change it. So structure, reinforcement, and rebar cover settings. In here, I add. You know, you can change it any description that you want, 20 mil cover. Um, if you've got beams, you have a beam cover, you'll have a uh, column cover, you'll have a slab cover, a uh, pad footing cover, pile foundation cover, you can, the list keeps going. 
All right, anything with concrete putting steel on, you could put a cover into it. 20 millimeters is what we're going to use. All right, you find these values from the AS3600, your concrete standard. You can either go through there, um, find out where your structure is located. All right, for South Australia, we're in a temperate climate. Um, or temperate zone um, and we're in an A2 classification um, in that table it comes across you look at your compressive strength of concrete then you grab your cover or what you can do because we're doing footings um, look at the AS2870 residential footings and slabs and in there it just says um, you can take 20 millimeters to the damp proof membrane or the Fortacon all right, we've got Fortacon around our footings, as I explained when we looked at footings. So 20 mil is what we're using. All right, just thought I'd explain where that value comes from. So change them in here, rebar cover settings, change them all to 20. You can hover over it and it's going to tell you which cover it is. But basically, top, bottom, sides. All right, easy way to look at it. We've got a rectangle or a square, top, bottom, sides. Rectangle, all right, is this by the depth plus this, all right. Okay, with the green tick. Uh, just to remember, everything is locked out until I pick one of these two. Pick a tick, and this symbol here is just showing that you've got a slab sitting in there. All right, what I'm gonna do now is a few things. We're going to go VV or VG on the keyboard, our visibility graphics. We're going to come into our Revit links. I'm just going to move this up here so we can see some of the walls and see what I'm doing. This is the only way we can really come into our Revit model. The other thing we can do is at the moment, if I go to click anything, so if I grab these walls, the blue box shows the outside of it, grabs everything. I can hover over it and go tab, and then I can grab the wall. And I can do a couple of things with it, but not too much. I can right click and I can override the category. I can do some adjustments in here. You can play around with them, um, but it's not overly useful. All right. So what you do is in this one here, VV, in the Revit links, we check this display setting here. It's by host view. Click on it and everything's locked. I can't come in here and change anything. So what we need to do is we go custom. This unlocks, model categories, and go by custom. And now I can change all everything in here. All everything, good English, Nathan. I can change everything in here. Um, you might have it locked to just structure at the moment. If you do, make sure you tick on the architectural. Um, I'm gonna turn off the floors from the architectural, which is gonna be these here and the other slab sitting. So turn that off, it disappears. I can turn off the columns if I want, which are these ones here. But they're okay, they're a structural element. I might just leave them for now. Usually we wouldn't put in the columns or the posts in architect or architecture. We would put it into a structural file. Um, just a heads up on that one. The other thing I'm gonna do, it's gonna come down to walls. I'm gonna change the walls to be a half tone. Go okay. And they're a bit lighter now. Um, I might increase a bit of transparency on them. So I click the override. Um, let's try 25. Apply. All right, that's a bit better. Go okay, okay. My walls are pretty thin. All right, I can see through them, which is nice. I might hide this one. Hide the symbol. All right, and now I'm going to come in and put in some footing beams. Also, because I'm going to be putting in some footings, it's going to be a bit tricky to see where my footings are going to sit. We only really show our walls if we have internal load bearing walls. Generally, what will happen is the trusses will span to the outside. Um, so we definitely have to put footings underneath the outsides. But say if we have something sitting on this wall, we'll run a footing underneath it to support it. All right, you've got 500 mil either side. so. 500 millimeters on this side, I can run a footing, or 500 mil on this side. Um, if not, I have to put a slab thickening under it. All right, you'll learn that in Geo. Um, but for now, 
just follow what I do. So VV, let's just turn off this link for now. Go apply. So it's just my slab that's here. Let's put in um, our footings. All right, so let's come through and go beam. What do I get first? I get a UB, so a universal beam, which is steel. I want to deal with concrete, so let's use a concrete beam. 300 by 600, that will work for me. If you don't have it, find your concrete beam. If not, load it in. You can go load family. Um, beams, uh, structural framing. Grab your concrete, All right, grab a rectangular beam, open. Edit type, make sure it's 300 by 600. For your footings for your project, you will need to go through, um, I will give you your specs. Um, you need to go through page 30 of the AS2870. All right, so you need to go through, um, as I know you all remember and loved thoroughly, um, page 30, which is this one here. I'll give you a site class and the type of construction. You have to grab your depth and then grab your footings, All right, your reinforcement, as well as your mesh. All right, so you have to use this for your project. Um, but for your practical two, as well as this submission, just follow what I'm doing. So 300 by 600, let's go okay. Now I've got a few different things here, a few different um, geometric positions I can deal with. I'm gonna change the rebar cover straight away. All right, we can change them after, um, but for now let's just leave them there. Um, I'll explain this. So what this is, is if I draw a beam from here to here, this is what I get. This line here, this middle line, tab, that one there, is the middle of the beam. All right, that's where my slab is. So what I can see is I've drawn it in a stupid spot. The dash line shows what's hidden, so it's under the slab. This part here is sitting around it. I look at my 3D and shade it. This is what's happening. All right, it's not sitting. Part of it's sitting under my slab, but the other part isn't. All right, if you want to put in your um, edge rebate, the way you would do that is you would have to manipulate some of the slab um, and you just justify the Z, which is up and down, apply, and then you get your um, rebate in here for your brick. All right, but we're not going through that for now. Just having a look that the undashed line is due to the fact that we can see this concrete from on top. The dashed line is what's under the slab. So what I need to do is I need to shift it somehow. Now I can, if I wanted to, just drag it down, um, but that creates a couple of issues. It's gonna be easier um, knowing the Z is up and down, so towards me from the page. All right, so coming in and out of the computer. Y is up and down, Z is left and right. So let's change this Y justification. Let's go to left. All right, so what it does is it jumps it down. I've drawn from left to right. If I was to justify the um, Y justification to the right, it goes the other way to the center. All right, basically half up, half down. So let's come back and put it where it needs to go. All right, or I can specify a value. All right. Same with your Z justification, you can play around with it. Um, but what that does is shifts it up or down. So let's come through, um, draw in all of our footings. So I can just pick lines. All right, what you can see is obviously these are going in the wrong spot. I got half in, half out, a bit annoying, but for now it's okay. What I'll do, select them all, filter, go check none. Now, like I said, they're all structural framing elements or our beams. Change all of this at once to the left. All right, now, it hasn't done much for me. All right. So, this top one's in the right spot. 
Detect none, structural framing. Let's change this to right. Now, a bit nicer. You can either do that or as you draw them, as you draw in your beams, make sure you set it correctly from the start. You won't have to go through that. Now, it's starting to look a bit more like a footing layout. We've got to put in some other beams. Um, for your project, I will give you the footing layout you need to follow with the measurements. Um, for your practical two, um, try to space them the best you can at four meters. Um, but if you get stuck with any of it, again, just, just ask me in class and I can show you where your footings should sit. So beam. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in the center. Because um, I need a beam to go from this corner to this corner. They're not, you know, running straight here isn't a good idea because it's such a small spacing between them. So I can run on an angle. So I grab the intersection between them. to here, oh, it hasn't quite sat where I wanted it to, so I can try to play around with some of this justifying, oh, and what it's done is this side's fine, this side's not. I can play around with some offsets, um, which probably isn't going to be the easiest, but what if I just shift this, oh, if I shift this in, it shifts the beam. Alright, it's not going to let me snap to the end point. Alright, so I get a little bit of annoyance here. Alright, you can shift the Y offset if you wanted to. We could align it if you wanted to. Um, just bear in mind there is different ways to go about it. Um, we're going to come back and revisit this in a second. But just to get your mind around the fact that we can shift where these things are sitting. All right? We can also shift um, this part of the beam and fix the other part. Or we can fix the front part at zero and we can change the other one. All right? So what I mean by that is if I change this to be 300, all right? it changes the beam where it is. Right. So what that's done is changed this direction here. All right. That's why it's a bit more skewed. All right. So let's put in these footings. Let's drag this straight up. Bit of overkill, but that's fine for now. Let's drag this one straight down. This one here, a bit more tricky. So we might come back to it. This one here will run straight through. What you'll see is Revit will cut them all for you straight away. A couple of more beams. I'm going to need one in the mid span. So I can't find it. SM on the keyboard, and I can grab it straight down. All right, from the center, four meters. Right, remember to draw straight, just hold shift, and it will go straight for you. You can keep going with the four meters, or I can copy. All right, if you want to copy, you can. Four meters. All right. If you're doing that, just be careful. Any shift in the width, and your beam will sit on the outside. All right. Same with your um, steel reinforcement in the cross section. If you do that, you'll get the same problem. All right. But for now, because it's all in the same width, 4,000 there, copy, all right, multiple, focus on that start. Now four meters, that's gonna be okay. That's the one that's gonna go on an angle. This here's a bit wider than what it should be. All right, um, for now, that's okay. We're not designing the foundations, but just bear in mind this span here is too big. All right, let's do this funny one here. All right, trying to grab the two endpoints. All right, doesn't really like it the best, but that's where it's going to sit. So what I've done, just to go back, is when I've drawn from here, which is that intersection, 
what I do is I find here, which is the intersection between the two endpoints of those beams. Snap to there, and that's where that footing will sit on the angle. All right, so this footing layout um, will work. This here's probably a bit stupid to be going the whole way up. Um, this here obviously needs, you know, you might have one coming through on an angle or running the whole way. Different ways to do it, you'll learn that in your geotechnical class. Um, we're not going to get stuck in doing the um, foundation design. This is your footing layout. Um, so what you can do, you can then measure it if you want. So measuring these is a bit easier. Um, but you will need to do this for your um, practical two. The one on the angle, a um, bit trickier, just ignore it. Um, you'll learn how to measure it and detail it in your um, geotechnical class. But basically you'll show you the fall or the slope of it. Um, inside the drawing um, but typically you don't put measurements on your footing layout all right um, so bear that in mind that typically there is no measurements here um, but for us we're going to take it all right so you need to come through and measure it all All right, then you guys can do this side here. A um, couple of things, you can see some clashing here. All right. So you might need to go through and change the text height to adjust that. Changing the scale will also help, it makes this drawing much bigger. So you've got a few options, either change the scale, find another way to sit them in, or change your text all right um, just want to um, iterate something here and that is if you hand me any drawing on Revit with these stupid lines all right expect it to come back to your email and you'll be resubmitting it all right these are the most ugly useless things all right you do not put in consulting drawings fabrication you will all right, fabrication you might for steel plates and things like that, but to get rid of it, for my sake more than anything, go edit. So sorry, let's come back. Select them, edit type, witness line control from gap to element, fixed to dimension line, apply, and OK. How much better is that? All right, I know you're all just loving how much more neat that is. Um, but that's how it's going to be done. All right, same thing. You can measure your outsides as well to sit here. All right, either do it before, uh, after or do it before. It's up to you. So you can just go annotate or even up here and change it straight away. Um, but for God's sake, please do not let me see you with those ugly lines on your drawings. Okay, that's done. Now, I obviously measure the other side and finish off your annotations. But what we need to do is, oh, I need to continue this one actually. So let's continue that through. All right, that looks a bit better. Um, what we need to do is we need to put in some mesh. So where do I find that? Let's go structure. What we're going to be putting in is, we're not going to be putting in a fabric sheet. We're going to put in a fabric area. All right, click fabric area, and then what Revit does is it goes, hey, where do you want to put in this fabric area? Where do you want to put in your mesh? All right, where, where do you want it to go? We need to specify where we want it. So we click our slab, highlights in blue, click it once, and we get these boundary conditions again. All right, we've got some properties here of our mesh. Now the fabric sheet, all right, RF or SL. All right, so we're not using rectangles, we're using square. All right, so let's come through and let's go SL82. That's the mesh that we want. We can come here, we can check it. All right, you've got your lengths, you find your SL82. Where do I want to go? I want to sit from the top. 
All right, so our mesh isn't as much for strength. It's more so for crack control. All right, you'll learn that in your uh, structural analysis. But usually the mesh is up there to stop the cracking from occurring. All right, um, our spacings of it all. Um, where we want it to go, additional cover. So we've set 20, 20 uh, millimeters for our slab. If I want to sit a bit further, I could put in additional cover here. All right, you'll use this when you put set down. So where you've got your wet areas that might sit down by 50 millimeters, you'll put extra um, cover here to sit below um, where your set down area is. But you'll look at that at in structural drafting with me. So let's come through and let's grab our boundaries. So our mesh goes the whole way to the edge of the slab. Come through, tidy it all up. Get there, to there, to there. Oh, and one more I've missed. So there. Green tick. All right, Nathan, you're a goose. You haven't done that one. So there, there. All right. Now these lines here. Don't worry about them. That's just showing the mesh. Click the tick. All right, and now I have mesh sitting in there. So if I come over, this is what I can see. So I have mesh sitting all through my footings, or sorry, through my slab. Now for my footing layout, I need to hide it. All right, so VV. This time in the model categories, this is the structural model that I'm working in. This is the linked model. So I've modeled it in here. So let's come through, look for our stru structural fabric area. Apply. Fabric reinforcement, apply, okay. So it's hidden all of our mesh. All right, so you get a clean footing layout. Now what I need to do is I need to go with a section. Let's take a cross section through here. This blue dashed line is what I can see in that section. So let's just drag this in a little bit. All right, I just wanna see one, two, three, four beams. I don't wanna see this one. So right click, go to view. I can see my rivet link up the top. Let's just turn that off for now. Rivet links, sorry, just untick it. Apply, okay. And this is what I can see. Change my detail level to fine. All right, let's go shaded, all right. What I can see is I can see a slab. If I zoom right in, I can see the mesh that I put in there. If I want to see the bars, wireframe, so I can see it through. But what I can see now is I can see a clear cut difference between where my footing is and where my slab is, which is not what I want. All right, and um, we know that the footing layer, uh, the footing cross section, sorry, has a set down, a set down, a rebate in here. And um, like I said, for us, we can ignore it for now. Um, we'll go through it later. What I can see is I can see this. All right, this line, I don't want there. So what causes that line? Well, there's two reasons why that line is there. Firstly, usually the first one is you still have your architectural floor sitting in. And then the only other reason is because when we've done our footings, so pick one of them, go SA, select all of them, or right click, select all. When we've done our footings, we haven't set the concrete grade. So scroll down, grab your structural material in here, click the three dots, it has to be the same. All right, they don't pull one kind of strength for the footings and another kind of strength for the slab. Typically, um, they're all the same. All right, go okay. And that will remove that line. So it's all one homogeneous material. The only exception really to that rule is um, if you've got polished concrete up on the top layer there, um, but more so for columns for multi-story buildings. 
All right, for the column supporting um, high-rise construction, the columns down the ground floor or on the bottom have to hold much more force or loading or weight compared to the columns as we come up the building. Um, so as opposed to shifting the sizing, so the columns might get smaller as we go up, which isn't, you know, has its, its issues with it um, based on your centroid being different. Um, but what you can do is you can reduce the concrete compressive strength, which reduces the strength of the columns, but it affects the cost. Uh, lower strength concrete is much cheaper. Um, you'll learn about that um, in your structural analysis course, um, but just a little side note while we're here. Um, it's kind of like a TED talk, but that's okay. All right, so we've done this, um, put our mesh in. So now let's put in our reinforcement for our footings, and then I can shut up and leave you all alone because we've been recording for a little while now. All right, so put these in, rebar. Um, this is okay, just go okay, no worries. I was just saying, hey, there's some settings you might want to look at later, but they're fine. So different kind of bars in here. What I'm going to put in is I'm going to put in HT. This is my ligature. All right, so if I look here, that's my ligature. Now I can move the mouse around to flip where it sits or spacebar. Click spacebar and it flips it around for you. All right, it's up to you wherever you want to put it. Um, usually at the top somewhere is the better way to go. Um, set the property we want to use um like i said six mil ligatures um a bit too small get a big concrete standing on them they start to kind of buckle and twist a little bit um so let's use n10s all right so a bit thicker which is good um the green dashed line that you can see is the cover that revit provides so you see one for the slab and one for the footing um, we got a few different options up here. All right, you've got placements, um, your sketching of the bars and stuff like that. Um, you'll learn a bit more in structural drafting. Placement is very important. We're about to go through this. Um, same with these, the orientation as well as the plane. Very important. All right, if you get this wrong, um, you're not gonna be able to put in the reinforcement properly. So there's your rebar set. So you can either change the rebar set in here through your layout rule or you can change it up here. It's up to you, it's the same thing. All right. um, but what we do is for the ligatures, because we know that they're spaced in and out of the page, so that from the computer it's coming towards you. All right, the beam is in 3D. So we change this one here. Um, we go maximum spacing. So usually we don't specify how many of them we want. We set a maximum spacing. So in the um, AS3600, your maximum spacing for your transverse reinforcement or your stirrups or ligatures, um, this little rectangular box, All right. the maximum spacing you get is 300. That's from that standard. All right. For footings, we can go a bit further. All right. Footings don't have much shear force acting on them. Um, so set them um, good to go. All right. Click it in. All right, Robert tells me straight away. Well, for the length of this, you've got 79 in there straight away. Might come across and just do them all while I'm here. All right, so 65 in that one, 79 in that one, and 59 in that one. The reason for that is if you have a look at the beams that I'm putting them in. All right, beam one, beam two, beam three, beam four. All right, so the highlighted blue is the ligatures. They're different lengths. All right, that's why we get more or less in, a, in, um, in them. What you can see is it's a bit of a clash between the two. So we just click on these and we just drag them down a little bit. All right, I just want them to sit just underneath where my um, uh, slab mesh is because what will happen on site is they will tie the mesh um, to these cages here. All right, so just drag them down a little bit. Don't have to make them exact. All right, but the bar has to be sitting above where the cage is. Let's drag them down. All right, we've put in our um, ligatures. The other thing to note is usually your footing cross sections 
is a scale of say one to 10. All right, one to 10, um, one to 15 or one to 20. Um, now what you can see is my concrete it's a bit more um, reflective of what it is. So it's much closer, more detail. Um, but usually um, what you do is you wouldn't space them out this far. You would try to find ones that are a bit closer. So what you might do is find these ones in here. So you would take a section through here and find just the three. Right, there's no reason to go head over hills and get heaps of them going. It's just a typical cross section like we did on AutoCAD. Um, the next thing we need to do is rebar. So we need to put in our other reinforcement, our bars, which is shape S. So we come down, find our rebar shape S. Now this time we're not spacing these out. Um, but first thing that you can see is, well, this is going up and down, left and right. All right, which is not the way that these should be sitting. All right, I want them to be looking like this. So placement plane, well, the current work plane is okay. All right, but what I need to change, I need to change the orientation. If I go parallel to cover, a bit better. If I go perpendicular to cover, a bit better. All right, so they both work. It's just shifting where the bars uh, are being drawn from. All right, and you'll find the same thing with your ligatures. You might have to play around with some of these to get them to work. Um, let's come through. And let's use say N twenty eight on the bottom. All right, a bit bigger. All right, a bit more sturdy. Um, let's come through and let's place them. So on the bottom, I might have a fixed number because I know how many bars I have. All right. I know exactly how many bars I have of what sizing. And I might put in three N28s. Now Revit will snap for you. All right, so it snaps into three different ones. All right, space bar will also change where it is placed. All right, so just bear that in mind. So I click them there. So I want the three down the bottom. And if I want um, up top, it gets a bit tricky. Revit might not be the easiest to snap to. Um, but up the top, I'm going to take, um, we'll go for two and 20 up the top. What I might do is just put in these all down the bottom first. So just clicking along. All right, now let's put the N20s up the top. So N20, let's put two of them in up top. All right, now it's not the easiest to snap up there. All right. Um, so what we can do, if you want, is I can draw one in. I can just come in here and I can place one there. And I can place one here. If I put it outside of it or touching that steel, um, I can move it after. Um, Rev will also tell me. But for now, let's just move them in roughly where they're going to sit. All right, in your structural drafting, um, I will show you how to place these exactly where they need to go. Um, but for us, just getting used to putting in the Rio, this is okay. All right, almost finished. One more there and one more there. Other things that you can do is if you know your bars tab, you can grab it and quite simply you can copy these up. All right, so you can do that as well if you would like. So that finishes our footings, um, putting in our reinforcement in our cross section. Um, not overly difficult, um, but that's how you put in our rebar. If I have a look in 3D, all right, I can see you know, now I'm actually starting to get all my mesh and stuff sitting in there. If I go to wireframe, I can see these bars through here. Um, the reason why I can see them kind of not overly nice, um, if I select them all, uh, what we need to do is change, sorry, it's a bit too quick. Select them all, so right click, select all in entire project, grab them all. Grab your view visibility graphics and make them unobscured in both analytical and 3D view. 
We're not using analytical, but you may as well while we're here. And view them as a solid. All right. Do the same thing for your bottom rebar. Select them all. View it as solid. Yeah, okay, and then grab the top while we're here. Oops, sorry, it's these bars here. Select them all. And view it as solid. And the reason for that is it will make sense in a second. All right. But if I go hit and line, not much changes. Oops, sorry. Sh shaded. All right. Not overly much is changing. Change it to fine. What I can see is I can now see these as a solid cage. All right. So here it doesn't look as impressive. That's why we've come to shaded. Uh, what we can see is I can see my steel actually sitting in the model. All right. Um, again, you'll go through this many times in structural drafting with me. Um, and we can do a takeoff list and work out how many of each that we have and all of that. Um, so just bear that in mind. All right, that is done. Okay, so that finishes the video for putting in our steel reinforcement. Um, the next one will come through and we'll be putting in our rafters. All right, so please make sure you get to this point. Um, any questions, um, just sing out. All right, thanks guys.